Hi everyone, welcome back. It's been a very long wait, and I apologize for that, but given my schedule for racing, it's been very difficult with my budget and time and all the stuff that's going on in my life, but uh, we're going racing. If you're new to the channel or a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for watching and, well, frankly, hanging in there with me. I greatly appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It would help me a ton with the algorithm and with uh, Google and their ad revenue program. Maybe someday Google will send me a few pennies because I have enough subscribers. And uh, the only real reason I'm doing this is to try to give back to short track racing and the stuff that I love and uh, and share along the way with you folks, all the stuff that I enjoy doing, be it on an amateur level, will it, whether it's uh, engineering or mechanics or fabrication or even trying to drive race cars sometimes, and we're finally going racing. If you noticed, the car is still a table, so I have been doing a very poor job of cleaning that up, but we're going to be doing that. I'm immediately diving into work. We're not going to piddle around with parts. We're not going to do any other nonsense. We're getting action, and we're doing it this immediately i gotta clean this thing off there's tools literally everywhere there's parts for other things and just garbage well it's not garbage it's all useful but you know just stuff in the way i gotta get it out of the way we're gonna fuel the car up we're gonna measure tires we're gonna stick it on scales and then i think tomorrow we're gonna tackle geometry and stuff and loading the trailer i want to be early i want to make sure that this thing is right and ready and whatever we have to do along the way i do not want to be waiting to the last minute. By the way, next video, hopefully I will have a big announcement. We'll see, fingers crossed, but uh, that might be coming. So let's get to work because it ain't gonna get done unless we do it. scale numbers are in it still needs a lot of work I've got to pull it back off and start pulling lead back out of it because I changed the rears that one's a little heavier rear percentage is a little high and overall weight is a little high so I figured I'd pull at least an even amount of lead out of the sides because I've got a bunch put in the car because with the built motor I got to be 3100 pounds so <sighs> let's get under there and start ripping lead out. I knew this was going to happen. That's why I wanted to allow at least two days to scale the car because I know doing this process is quite invasive. Pulling lead out of little tight areas is difficult, especially when you got to roll it back, jack the car up, and pull the wheels off in order to access them. So this will be fun. So she didn't fight me too bad. I had to pull a little bit of weight out of her. I don't know where I put it. Oh, there she is. I think I pulled a total of, let's see, 21, 27, that's 40, I can't math, 8, I think, plus 6. Oh, don't even ask me that. There's a reason why I'm in the job that I'm in, because I can't do math, so. She's ready to be at least on turning plates and do the geometry. I've got a, sh well, let's keep this PG. I've got a lot of caster in the right front to try to band-aid the loose condition coming off, which might have been caused by the fact that my lower control arms could tow in or out up to or over one full inch under bump and rebound because they were simply loose. And in doing that, it was making the front end of the car upset, and 
The only way I found that was at the icebreaker watching the roof cam from the heat race and saying, wow, this thing looks like it's all over the racetrack. Well, it kind of was. When I pulled the springs out, if you didn't see that episode, go flip through and find when I did bump steer and uh, when I found major problems and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, we were throwing a huge caster split at it. We were taking all the spring out of the right rear. We were throwing wedge at it. I mean, who knows how bad the front geometry was making the car. I mean, if you're, if the, <laughs> I mean, come on. If you're, I'm trying to think about it and it's wild to think about, but if you have the toe changing either in or out a full inch, that could do anything. And it's changing Ackerman, it's changing your bump steer, it's changing the toe, it's changing everything. The, basically, it feels like the front end is just doing whatever it wants. And I hope, I hope that was one of the major problems with the car and why it was so just unwieldy and un, unable to just get a set or drive it out of the corner. And the only time I ever had the car feel good was making the rear end open and taking it to Stafford where there's not as much banking and there's not as much, I guess, roll because you're at lower speeds. So hopefully having a tight front end fixes it, but we're going to play with the uh, caster on the right front, like I said, so that we get that down because I noticed it was affecting the bump steer because of how much angle is in the kingpin. So I'm going to take a bunch of that out. I'm going to try to get more camber out of it and reset toe and hopefully we'll be ready. But last setup day will be tomorrow and that's what we're doing. Then I'm going to roll it on scales one more time, get a final scale, then we'll set the uh, sway bar in there and be good to go. It's the next day and we're going to do geometry stuff. I just got done putting some air conditioning back in the truck because, well, because it's not going to rain, that means it's going to be, you know, 85 degrees and sunny. And uh, us New Englanders are not prepared for that sort of thing. Excuse me while I try to chase off a carpenter bee or fly or whatever this thing is. The heck did he go? Well, he'll be back. At either rate... I am inundated with rear axles right now. I got one here, that's my backup Stafford. I got this one here that you guys don't see. I got this one here that was my old Thompson rear that I just took out so that I could put this one back in. I need to, oh, I got this one here. How do I forget that? I got four rear ends, three, well, I got three rear ends. And um, anyway, I need to build some sort of a rack or something that I can put these on. Maybe you can just put them outside and put a tarp over them or something. But there's just way too much here, and I need the floor space. But that's going to have to wait for another day. Maybe I'll dig up some scrap metal or something hanging around. Oh, wait. It's, uh, it's gone. So I'll be working on caster camber and maybe toe because I got the bar in here. Even though I did string it, but you never know. You might change it a little bit if you change caster. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to eyeball a little bit of the right front, try to knock her down a hair. I want to get a little more camber and a little less caster. So I'll eyeball that to at least get her close. Left front should be probably pretty close. So uh, you change ride heights and stuff, you're going to change your caster camber a lot. So you're always going to have to look at it if you make any adjustments whatsoever, which... Well, we did, because we changed the front springs. And to be fair, the back ones too. So this will be fun, eyeballing it and then trying to figure out what I got to do.
Well, I'm starting to clean up. I gotta get these pads back out. I might roll it back on the scales just to make sure last time that this thing is ready, I might actually go through also and uh, clean up a little bit of this because I forgot to put some rivets in and fix that little bit of body work. But what's funny is the little, what's it called that I just did? The, you know how you eyeball something and just kind of hope for the best? Well, I did that and uh, it turned out to be exactly where I think we can, well, that's as far as we can go. So the numbers are pretty much what I want. It's something that I've raced before, something I can live with. It's really not a big deal. And uh, it's actually kind of what I was hoping for. So it's not perfect, but it'll do is what I'm trying to say. Plates got to get out. Tools got to get out. Crap's got to get off the car. Air pressure's got to get rechecked. Poor old disgusting scale box that I bungee corded to a jack stand so I could read it while sitting in the car it needs to be put back into place and then all we gotta do is load everything in the trailer I am running a little bit behind I'm a few hours from where I thought I would be at this moment because I had to uh, do some other domestic stuff but that delayed me quite a bit but at least we're kind of seeing some numbers that we are happy with for once. And, you know, I'm going into this with very low expectations, like I kind of do most times lately. It used to be, God, a handful of years ago, I'd go there hoping to win. Now, I'm just trying to see some improvement. And that's, it's sad, but if we want to start going in the right direction, that's kind of what we need to do is we need to just start looking for anything to help us out, any improvement, anything to learn from the mistakes we've been making and neglect that we've been enacting on ourselves. So I hope we're ready. And I'm just really kind of hoping to go out there and have some fun for once, you know, instead of going out there and struggling because, man, racing is supposed to be fun, but when you struggle for so long, it really becomes painful, but... You know, we'll, we'll get there, and hopefully it's not going to take me too, too long. So, fingers crossed, we got a little bit of luck on our side this week. It's dark out. And since it's June, you know that's past 9 p.m., so much later than I expected. But everything seems to be okay. I made sure I tightened up a bunch of stuff that I forgot because, well... I was still adjusting on it, meaning I had to go and tighten up the tie rods, which I didn't tighten up after stringing the car because I didn't know if I was still going. Either way, everything else should be tight because whenever I put something on a car, I make sure to tighten it as if it's the last time I'm touching that bolt. Even if it makes taking it off again in five minutes much more difficult because I forgot something. We're at the point now where we can load up. Finally, after two months of sitting and doing nothing and collecting all of the concrete dust off of my floor on everything around me, we can put this thing in the box and go racing tomorrow. However, everything else can go in the trailer except the car because, again, it's after 9 p.m. I like to be a good neighbor. I like to not rock the boat. I don't wanna bother people. I'm not going to winch it. I'll just wait till tomorrow morning, wake up, make sure everything's out of the shop, roll the car on the trailer. Time to move the tools. taking a quick look around here to make sure I got everything and uh well the last few times we went racing I noticed that I was pretty well well ill prepared I should say because I would be thrashing and saying oh god I'm really panicking and trying to get stuff done last minute and right now I'm like well I'm just walking around the day before we go racing looking for things to put in the trailer and it's like you know 
At this point, if we need it, or if something's catastrophically wrong, well, I guess we're just loaded up and go home because this is uh, quickly becoming my confessional. I uh, don't know for certain, but this may very well be my last race at Thompson for the foreseeable future. I hate to say that, but it is what it is because, and uh, people can say that I'm a whiner or a complainer or whatever, but, you know, I was watching videos from just a few years ago and the competition was a lot more fun and a lot more, you know, there was a lot more parody. There was a lot more people who could contend. And then they changed all the rules to include a whole bunch of stuff that's really expensive. And I'm like, I can't afford that. You know, I, if I'm going to put all my eggs in one basket, I'm going to put it somewhere else. But like what I have used to be competitive. And then now all of a sudden it's not because I can't afford 10 grand worth of advantages, I guess you could say. Hell, it could be even more than that. Um, and I could go into details, but everybody who were able to convince the tech inspectors to allow for these rules to pass were the people who weren't that competitive but could still buy an advantage. And then when they allowed it, they bought their advantage and now they're fast. So it's like I was getting by on my intelligence and talent alone and now that's not enough because I don't have... <sighs> all the components to make a street stock, a limited late model. And I just can't do that anymore. And I tried my best to do it and keep up. And the results just haven't, they just haven't been there. And I'm not willing to keep beating my head against a wall, trying to race a car from a division. That's basically a, an afterthought or maybe not an afterthought, but it's more of a, bygone time you know there's only one track in connecticut that's still holding on to the traditional rule set which again had more parity and had more competition and it made the cars a lot less expensive and i'm just gonna go there heck with it you know so i gave it my best shot I don't think we're going to really be contenders tomorrow, but I just don't think that bolting the front end on and making sure it's not flopping around is going to make up a seven tenths. You know what I mean? In a division that's running a full second faster than it was two years ago. It's just not worth my time anymore because I'm not emptying my bank account to go race you know, seven to nine times a year in a division that doesn't even look anything like it used to. And that makes me sad because that's what I loved before and now it's gone. So it ain't gone at Stafford and that's where I'm going to go. So sorry for the long winded diatribe here, but we're pretty much loaded up. I was looking around while I was talking and I think I got everything. So we're going to load up the car tomorrow when it's uh, not as inconvenient to the neighbors and I'll go grab the crew and we will be seeing you at the racetrack nice and early in the afternoon race morning i was out in my driveway with my sweep magnet and i found screws staples nails all sorts of good stuff so hopefully that will decrease the possibility of me getting a flat tire so i'm gonna go put this away somewhere i got everything put away last night like you saw in the video maybe i I think I posted that anyway, but I'm going to go, I think it's about 9 a.m. Probably get the car warmed up, throw it in the trailer. That way, uh, I already checked the pressures in the truck and trailer, which is something I never do, but I really should. <laughs> but that seems good. Everything's good. I pumped the air compressor up in the trailer and it's weird being almost, and I basically can put this in air quotes, prepared for once. Um, so I guess it's a new, so I guess it's a new, uh, page we're turning here for ourselves. So I'm going to throw this in the trailer and, uh, strap her down. That way we'll be ready to go when we're going.
So I guess I'll spend the next few minutes sweeping up the garage because working garages get dirty quick. So, oof. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to stand in here for a minute because that thing is piggy rich and she's burning my eyes. So I think I'll go stand outside for a few minutes and then sweep up my mess. And I guess I'll see you at the track. Well, we're here, but it's the typical parade of haulers. And, uh, you know, we're actually here early for once, which is kind of weird. So at least the air conditioning is ripping on the truck. And uh, we'll join the fray here and hopefully get in and get done and get ready shortly. I had to escape to the truck for a, uh, well, quieter place, I suppose, because we went out for practice and um, it feels better. It feels a lot better. Uh, Timesheet says we're third fastest in the first practice. I don't know how many guys are just getting tires set in or not, or uh, whatever the case is, but it's encouraging at least. It feels a lot better. We just need a little more on exit. And um, we're gonna try to make a couple of adjustments, but we're gonna wait until the heat race because I wanna be able to cool the car off right now. It's pretty hot out. I wanna cool the brakes off. I wanna cool the tires off. I wanna get the engine cooled down. We made a bar adjustment, we'll see what happens, and uh, I'll probably throw an in-car camera on for the heat race.
Well, we're done. Great, I just pulled, I just took, got the line up. Oh, where was I starting? Third. Oh. Car was wicked tight loose, going in, just plow the nose, touch the throttle, slide to the ass. Blew an inner axle seal. Yeah, we were third. Great. All I had so, to do was just push the first couple chunks up. Yep. And then you'd be all set and just go. Yep. I think we're just going to put the thing on the track and last, get a lap in and pull it in because it's not safe to have gear oil flying all over the place. And I don't want to blow this rear end up, obviously. And, and it's all over the inner tire. Of the Well, we swapped the tires to try to take care of Stagger. It's everywhere and it's not even really worth my time to be cleaning this but oh well that's how racing goes if i was in the points i'd probably risk it but i'm not so took today off of work because I woke up with my typical post-race migraine, which is fantastic like usual. I'm going to fight an ant problem that I have in my garage, which is really the icing on the cake, and get the car out because we've got multiple things to fix. And since I didn't really race, I guess I got a lot more to show you and a couple of extra days to film it. So let's get this thing taken out of the box and pour some antifreeze down the ant holes and <laughs> see if that kills them and if you hear any extra noise in the background there's a whole bunch of paving trucks doing paving on my road and they got the huge vibratory rollers out and that shake my garage and i don't care that place needed to be repaved for probably 20 years so uh i'm glad it's finally getting done so kudos to those guys but let's get this thing unloaded and let's start tearing it apart like it's running down the left rear tire so we're probably gonna have to throw those brake pads away and wash out the tires because I did I tried something with stagger I was gonna swap that tire for this tire and then when I blew them up they were the exact same stagger the opposite way so I'm like well that didn't work but both tires have yeah that's gear oil all over them so I have to wash them out I have to wash the hub off I have to wash the rotor off 
And like I said, throw the brake pads away because now they're oil impregnated. But I got another problem as well. You see a little spot on the floor there? Yeah, one of these clamps is leaking. And I tried tightening it at the track and it just kept leaking. The car never really got hot. It was only, I think the hottest it got was about 200. But, you know, I'm going to have to check the water level. But we're probably going to drop it anyway. I have new hoses coming. The, these are kind of old. This is, I think, a factory hose. That's not even silicone. I think I took that and just cut it. This one's silicone. That one down there. Everything down here is like some kind of universal kit, but I'm going to have to take that off and fix that and get new stuff. I have new clamps. I'm not going to use these damn worm clamps anymore. I bought on Amazon. They have stainless steel T-bar clamps. I think these are inch and a quarter and these are, no, inch and a half and inch and three quarter. So I bought two packs of four. We're going to put T-bar clamps on it and brand new um, upper and lower hose ends so that we can not have any more leakage issues. I'll also check the radiator, make sure it's not damaged. I don't think it is. I think it's fine. I think it's just a clamp issue. I used to double clamp the bottom, so we'll have to figure it out. We got a new set coming. I know I mentioned before that this might be my last race at Thompson for a while, but to be honest with you, we got one coming in two weeks. And I think I might go try that one too. You know, a fellow competitor who watches the channel, Ryan Waterman, handed me a set of four tires with like one race on them. It's a lot better than what's over here in this pile. So I think I might just throw those on some rims and go race again. But uh, we got to get this thing fixed and for, if we're going to do that. So I'm going to have to check to see if I have gear oil. And we're going to have to start pulling the left rear and the chuck out of the rear end and all sorts of real fun stuff. So it's going to get hot today. It's already starting to get pretty hot and I might as well set the tripod up and start working because this is a mess. process of cleaning I tried to get as much of the oil off of the inside of the tires as I possibly could because you can still see the lines in it it's actually kind of puffy where the lines are because oil will impregnate rubber and it'll make it expand so you try to get that stuff off of there as fast as possible you don't want that on there there's some more parts like a dry flange and the brakes and hub assembly and that cleaned up real well I'm just looking at trying to piece that back together i'll probably start greasing up the bearings which i have over here as quickly as possible all the background noise is the fan that's outside and over here I'm trying to get some air circulating here because it's 85 degrees out just cleaning up parts as best i can you know everything over here is as clean as it possibly can be thanks to the part washer again under here it was just Scongy. I mean, it was so slimy. It was like the time I was a little kid in a cheap motel with my family and I accidentally turned on the uh, wrong cable box. Kind of looked like what I saw on the TV there. Either way, we're still wiping it up, cleaning up. I'm gonna, I looked inside and I could actually see the seal is still technically there. I don't know if it'll focus, but the seal is still there. It's just been oblonged, I think. Uh, we're not going to obviously be able to save that because it's leaking, clearly. So I wiped up as much of the chassis as I possibly could. I got the rear dripping right now because I'm draining that. Then I'm going to pull the center out of the rear end. we got to drop the drive shaft and pull the center out. And i got to pull the drive, or at least the axle, out of the other side so I can pull the center out. But we're making a lot of progress and a big mess still so cleaning continues well that hurt i was in this cabinet down here that's now on the floor looking for brake pads to throw back in here maybe a little bit more aggressive 
Who knows? At least I have something I don't have to spend money on. And this shelf completely collapsed, and then I look at it, and, um, yeah, this shelf has been inside its whole life, just like this one right here. And it's completely rotted through. By the way, I have a dehumidifier, so it keeps all the water vapor out of the garage, but uh, I guess I'm tearing this down and throwing this away, so that's great. new one. Yeah, that's fixed and I guess I can get back under here to do what I was supposed to be doing. towards the edge. I don't remember it being that far out. How's this side looking? Exactly the same. That's weird. I thought I pushed those in a little bit further. Either way, that one looks okay. That one looks exactly the same. I'll have to pull it out see if it's torn anywhere, which it has to be, or maybe it just walked too far out and it was getting underneath it. I don't really know, but I gotta pull it out anyway and uh, we'll start getting her repaired hopefully pulled one out of the old parts bin i guess i'll just slap another one back in it there's other ones that work better i think but like this is pretty universal and i'm not junking on the brand because they make some really good stuff it's just that these just can't can't hold up if you don't treat them well so what i'm gonna do is to make it hopefully last a little longer is i'll wipe all the the oil out of the axle tube maybe take some brake clean and dry it out as much as I can and then what I'll do is I might take some RTV and go on the inner lip of it when I shove it in there I don't know if that'll really do anything or if I'm even actually going to do that um, but I'll also take and pack the inside of this with grease and rub the face and everything with grease and then when I go to put the axle in I will slather the axle in grease because grease is just going to be eaten up by the gear oil anyway and then put it all back together and hope for the best and we'll see what happens. up in the sweltering heat waiting for the giant thunderstorm to come and knock my power out tonight because that's what it feels like and that's what they're saying is going to happen but we'll see this is back together i gotta go get the brakes put on but i gotta wipe these down still i just kind of gooped them up and i'm still cleaning up i'm finding tools and parts and all sorts of fun stuff everywhere and we're about ready to reassemble. Hopefully these seal up good and everything's okay after that. But you never know with these things sometimes. And I was as gentle as I could be and still not perfect. I got to go put the other side together, put the axle in and the brakes back on. And we'll see what happens from there. But oh yeah, I got to put the oil back in it too. And that's down here somewhere. I collected all of it. So I and recycle that back in there because it's still good it never got hot so this is this is my face now and uh that's what i get i suppose but we're gonna just bolt her back together and wait for parts to show up and uh fix what's broken and maybe we'll go back out again for yet more punishment unless somebody feels like helping me with setup i think you know when we went out and practice we were third fastest on the charts and I don't 
really have the tires. I know my sponsor gave me some money, but I'm kind of saving that for when we go to Stafford. Because I want to be really prepared. I'm not going to squander that money on dumb stuff. I'm going to use it on the race car, but we want to we want to kind of land at Stafford and end up, you know, really, really good off the trailer. So I held on to it, and we're going to try to make the best of it. And um, that's kind of the plan. And then, again, a fellow competitor handed me tires and said, here you go, it's got a race on them. And I can make a lot with a little, trust me. And I'm going to quick put this thing back together and get out of this heat. It's probably only like 2 or 3 in the afternoon, but... I'm a New Englander, man. I ain't used to this type of heat. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of here. That's racing, though. You know, having failures. And I I just didn't want to be out there with something that's leaking and it could have been dangerous. You know, it was getting into the brakes and I got to throw those brake shoes away. I tried to clean them up, but I don't really like it. And You know, it, it's just unsafe to not have good brakes, which is kind of how I felt in the heat race. It didn't feel like the car wanted to slow down, and I'm wondering why. And it's like, well, because, you know, there's oil on your brakes. And, oh, yeah, that kind of hurts, doesn't it? So we'll come back and try again, hopefully. Hopefully we can actually shoehorn that back on the schedule. And failures happen. That's part of life, and you rebound from it and sweat to death in the garage the next day without any sort of influence. And, uh... Keep plugging away because, you know, this is the only thing I ever cared about. And all I care about is the health of short track racing. And if I don't participate, who's gonna? And <sighs> Thank you all again. I appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It's free and uh, just a click of a button can help me so much. And I'm not in it for fame. I'm just trying to get Google to pay me ad revenue. And <laughs> at least I'm real about it. And Maybe someday we'll have apparel. Maybe someday we'll have merch. Maybe someday we'll grow to a point where we can spread the message to other people and help get them involved in the racing sport. And, you know, obviously this isn't going to be all racing all the time. Sometimes I'll have other cars or hot rods or whatever going on in the background. And, you know, we'll do what we can on an amateur level. And if you think anybody would like this sort of thing, send them my way. And uh, we'll get her buttoned up and back on track soon. But until next time, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.